Hello, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another Talk Talk, where we take teaching theory and turn it into teaching practice. In keeping with our theme of ways to challenge gifted students or uh, students that are ready for a challenge in your classroom, what we're going to be talking about today are known as bonus opportunities. So the logical question is, what is a bonus opportunity? What does that look like? Well, let me tell you, start first by telling you what it is not. A bonus opportunity is not extra credit or a bonus points added to an already existing grade. A bonus opportunity is, as the name implies, it's an opportunity to take things a step further. Uh, not because you're going to get a better grade because of it, uh, not because uh, it's going to get you in, in favor with the teacher, but because it will expand your learning. Uh, and a lot of students who are inquisitive and, um, you know, want to be challenged would see, would see this as an opportunity, not as extra work. It should never feel like extra work. It should just feel like here is something that's available to you should you choose to do that. Um, and if, if you choose to do that, I will definitely give it my, uh, my best uh, look over and so I can give you feedback on it uh, because it, it is important whatever you're grading um, to be able to provide feedback whether in written form or in spoken form. So that is what a bonus opportunity is. So when can you use bonus opportunities? So there are several places in the classroom where you can use bonus opportunities. First off would be just in homework or day-to-day -day work. So are there opportunities for students to take it a step further? So let's say that you gave students these 20 problems to, so they could demonstrate their mastery of being able to uh, figure out fractions, unit fractions specifically. So this would be, this would definitely uh, determine whether they have figured it out or not, whether they get the correct answers. But is there a way that you can take it a step further? Um, and so you have these, this opportunity to put these questions in here that are just an addition and it doesn't need to be part of the, the grade or part of the um, assessment of how they did. It's just to get to, to expand their thinking. Um, and keep in mind, a, again, a bonus opportunity is not just simply giving them five or more problems of the same work or five more complex problems. Uh, it's, it's to get them to think about what it is that they're doing. So here's an example of four questions that you could ask as a bonus question, bonus opportunity question. So how would you use the skill of unit fractions in your own life? And so students would have to think, when would I do unit fractions? Um, if I'm trying, if I have a pizza, or if I'm trying to figure out how much candy I'm going to, you know, give a split between my brothers and I, you know, there are recent ways that they would use this in their real life. And so that's, it's kind of, um, connecting that to the metacognitive of their own lives and giving them some context of why this is valuable or why this should be done. The next question would be, is there a simpler way to figure these out? So they've been taught how to do it. And so what you're asking them to do now is just to think, is there, is there a more simplified way that they might do that? And what would that simplified way be? Um, then the next bonus question could be, what question did you think the most difficult and why? So again, you're just getting students to think, this, this question was kind of challenging. Number 17 was kind of challenging. What about it was more challenging than say question number four? Um, and so why and why was this? And then lastly, another question that you could ask is, how would you explain how you solve these to a friend? So this is a student being able to synthesize the information and put it into a, a language that is familiar to them and that is that makes sense to them. Um, so this this would be a good uh, way to take it to the kind of the next step. Um, and so they're not just doing the practice of this, but they're knowing the why and the how very clearly. Or let's say that you're a language arts teacher and for homework, you've assigned students to read a chapter or chapters from the book Life of Pi by Jan Martel. You could ask them, you could give them a set of questions to think about. Uh, when they're done, they could choose one, they can choose all of them, they, they could write out their thoughts, they can just think about it, they can choose not to do it at all. But the idea here is that you just get students thinking about this uh, a little bit more than they were than they were in the context of just reading it. So some questions that you might ask is, would the book be told differently if the main character were not from India? In, in their perspective. So that's something just to think about. There's no right or wrong answer for that. There's just you know, thinking. 
Uh, why do you suppose the author chose a tiger to be in the boat with them? Again, the, the person reading it doesn't necessarily know this, but they can make guesses, and some guesses will be more thought-provoking than others. How would you predict how the story is going to end or what will happen next? So asking students if they've read chapters three through five, what are, what's going to happen that will um, allow them to, um, uh, to figure out what might happen, like what, what clues do they have? And then the final question is the, the setting of the book, which is on a boat. Could this story be told in a different setting, like a room or an island or a, you know, a school? Um, so again, you're just asking them questions to think about. You're not looking for correct answers. You're just giving them, you're saying here, after you read, just give it some thought. And because they're thinking about it, they're going to remember what they read so much better because they've got some context to go with. They, they understand where it, it fits in, in, in their own thinking. So that's why that's a good opportunity um, to do and, and to not have it as a grade necessarily, but just to have it as an opportunity for them to think about that. How I see uh, bonus opportunities manifest themselves in the classroom a lot is when teachers have what are called uh, must do's and can do's. So a must do is the things that, so the work path where students have to do these things because they're skills they need to learn. And then typically the can do's are bonus opportunities. These are, if you get finished with your work, you can do this. You don't have to do this. It's not an assignment. It's not going to be graded. It's not um, necessarily, um, you know, really important to the, the big picture of what you're learning. Um, but hopefully these can do's are designed, again, not to give students just more work, but to give them different work, to think about the work that they're doing differently. So it could be a reflection. It could be, you know, uh, going to the next level with it and trying something that's kind of the next step. It could be thinking about how, you know, how the context of how this works in the real world. Uh, so there's all sorts of things that you can do with your, your uh, can do's. But again, that's an opportunity for students to choose whether they're going to do it or not. A second place that you could have bonus opportunities is in, say, project work. So students are working on a project. Um, and so you can put these bonus opportunities in there to extend the thinking in the project. But ultimately, the project, you're trying to get a certain mastery from students. Uh, but you do want to extend their thinking, especially with gifted students. So you could put a bonus opportunity in there. So this is what this might look like. This is a project involving the Renaissance where students have to create a Renaissance Hall of Fame. Uh, and so a part of the requirements is the what I want from them as a teacher. I want them to understand the contributions of the Renaissance, uh, why they're important, um, and uh, you know how they affected the world are kind of the big picture things I want students to understand and to master. And so students are given this, they have to give a presentation where they nominate their 10 top contributions during the Renaissance and they must prioritize and rank them themselves. Uh, and then they, you know, would, would uh, show that to the class and you're going to get different answers from different people. The bonus opportunity I threw on here uh, was they could design the building where the Hall of Fame is going to be housed uh, using Renaissance influenced ideas. Um, so they could make it out of Legos, they can make it out of toothpicks, they could make it on just a piece of paper, or they could do a, a rendering on a computer. But this was something that uh, was n was not part of the grade, but just gave them the opportunity to take what they had learned about maybe architecture from the Renaissance and to put that into play and allow them to be creative. Um, you know, how, how are they going to take what they've learned from that and kind of put it into their own uh, use? How are they going to, you know, be able, they're going to make choices on what they do. They don't have to just copy a building. They can make their own choices. So it's going to, again, expand the thinking of these students. Your bonus opportunity need not be so prescribed. So in other words, in the Renaissance one, I said, here's the bonus opportunity that you can take. But giving students more choice can also show their initiative. It shows their, you know, that they're uh, willing to take that step themselves. And so I might have a project and not say, give them a specific bonus opportunity, but use a rubric like this, the single subject rubric, where in the middle, students are showing mastery. But if students are going to take it above and beyond, they have to take that opportunity to do that. Again, you can show mastery down the board and still get a good grade or an A in, in, for the project. But the 
the bonus opportunities is allowing you to take it a step further. So students then can decide for themselves the bonus opportunities that they're going to take and what are they going to do to expand their own thinking and what are they going to do to further I mean, make this project better as a result. So you don't have to necessarily tell them this is the bonus opportunity. You can leave it up to them, but give them a rubric like this that allows them to see that there is room to, to grow um, you know, using these opportunities. Uh, yet another place that you can use bonus opportunities is on your assessments. Um, and I want you, it's really important that you not think of these as bonus questions or bonus, you know, to, to increase their grade, like bonus points. Um, it, again, it's to get them to think differently. So here's an example of how you could take an assessment and give students a bonus opportunity. This is the Bill of Rights assessment that I gave to my eighth graders when I was a social studies teacher. And so the, the learning standard was just that students recognize what the Bill of Rights are and be able to uh, identify some of them. And so the first question covers that. Uh, name the Bill of Rights and what each of them does. So really simple, students are just regurgitating or recalling information that they learned. But notice I have choose one of the questions to answer. So I'm not telling students which one they have to choose. However, the way I've set them up is they become more difficult or, or challenge a different level of thinking with each, each one. So for example, the naming of the Bill of Rights is simple recall, a lower level uh, thinking. The next one is to explain how three of these amendments help to bring about freedom to Americans. So students still have to be familiar with the Bill of Rights to know which three they're gonna pick. And then they're gonna have to be able to apply what it is that they learned about those and why those bring freedom. So it's taking it to the next level, uh, application. Uh, and, they, and the last one is to pick one of the amendments from the Bill of Rights that you feel is most important to the country, justify why it's important, with several world world examples to back up your decision. And so this is using evaluation and analysis. So students are having to, to look at the 10, kind of weigh them and determine which one that they feel is most important to them and then link it to their own world um, and to figure out how that this amendment affects them directly. Um, and so all three accomplish the same goal of students being familiar with the Bill of Rights, and being able to name some of the Bill of Rights. However, they're at different levels. And so you would allow students to choose these based upon what opportunity they want. So one doesn't give you a better grade than another, um, but one will challenge your thinking more. And I would make sure that that was very clear to my students. And so they would have this opportunity to choose the question that they want to, to uh, use to determine whether they have a good understanding of the Bill of Rights or not. So there you have it some examples of how you can use bonus opportunities in your classroom. And bonus opportunities can be done with all kids, not just gifted kids, uh, because they, they make a choice whether they're gonna do it or not. Um, and so the, and this, them making this choice does not require more work from you, it just requires more thinking from them. And so you can guide their, their bonus opportunities or you can put it out there and let them come up with their own bonus opportunities. But knowing that there's a space to do that is really important. The challenge is going to be the temptation to grade this or to reward this. Um, a lot of times we, we want to motivate students by giving them either a good grade or a prize or a ticket or something or other. Keep in mind the the motivation here is the learning that's going to happen as a result. Um, and I know that seems like a, not a great prize, but it, it is actually an, an intrinsic motivation rather than an extrinsic motivation. So students will choose themselves. Yeah, I want to learn more about this. I'm curious about this. This is something I've always wanted to know. So we're going to tap into that intrinsic motivation rather than the false extrinsic motivation where we dangle something in front of them in order for them to do it. So the the, the real challenge as a teacher is to, to put dangle these bonus opportunities out there, but don't use it to to judge you know their their level of mastery or to improve their grade uh, it just gives you additional information and it allows students um, you, get to, you to see students where they're capable of going and what what their thinking is like 